and welcome to One Income Budgeting at Home with Melanie. Hi, Melanie. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the channel. Today we are doing something special, and we are going to be using a subscriber from my channel, and she is going to be as asking me some much-needed questions that y'all have been asking. So if you're ready, we are going to get started. First question, please. Okay, Melly. So our subscribers want to know a little bit more about you and your family and if you're a stay-at-home mom. Okay, so we are a family of six. Me and my husband have four beautiful little children. We have one girl and three boys. The youngest two are still in diapers, so there's that situation. And I am a stay-at-home mom. I only work seasonal during tax season and doing taxes. I also do Grubhub and DoorDash. That's about it. I, I don't do much. <laughs> Alright, so another question that our subscribers have, Melanie, is did you and your husband discuss posting your personal finances on YouTube before you started? Yes, that question is good. Me and my husband, we sat down and we discussed all of our financial information and I let him know that I wanted to start a YouTube channel and he agreed that it was a good idea, give me something else to do and have a hobby to do. And I have loved doing YouTube videos. So why did you start doing the videos? Well, when I first started watching other budgeters on YouTube, a lot of them had all different types of ways of budgeting, and but none of them fit into the way that we budgeted, being already a month ahead. So we had to come up with our own way of budgeting, doing our bills separately and having them come out like in a quarter or a, a fifth. And it just made us work a little bit easier. So that is why we really started because no one ever shows um, being a month ahead on most YouTube channels. So. so that leads me into a very important question. We all wanna know. How did you and your husband get a month ahead in your budgeting? So for us getting a month ahead, we ended up having some tax money left over last year. And for the longest time, it just setting our savings account and we didn't touch it. And then I was getting tired of living paycheck to paycheck. So I was like, hey, hubby, how about we get all of our money that we have around the house and our savings, your check, and put it all together and see if we have enough to make a whole... Um, grand total of how much our bills and expenses are and get us a month ahead so on how'd you come up with that number I added up every single bill that we had and used the maximum number of what the bill could possibly be and I had three expenses that we used we did groceries which was 600 we did gas which we budget 250 because I do a side drop of Grubhub and DoorDash so we had to budget a little more and I did a hundred dollars in diapers because I have I had three little ones in diapers. So those are all the expenses we added together with our bills and got our grand total of around 3,000-ish, somewhere right there. So how long ago did you start doing your budgeting? We started budgeting uh, back in May, like really in depth in May. June we got a little bit more, but I didn't start posting until like October after I kind of got my foot in the water and was able to get a little bit better grounds of how we like to budget. Awesome. What materials do you did you use to start with and what would I need if I wanted to start doing like you're doing? When I first started budgeting, I had a simple bill bill organizer and it it was just a little foldable notebook like thing and it had a pocket and it had where you could write all your bills down and we started using that for the longest time and then we moved into a uh, Erin Condren monthly deluxe planner and I use her 7x9 planner as well as her um, dry erase markers and her dual tip markers. Um, I do do budget stickers and those are from mostly from Sarah Marie on Etsy, Kate Budget and um, Romina Rosa are the most three that I have recently purchased from. I do use cash envelopes, which I also purchased from Kate Budgets. And then I have been making a few on my own because my husband got me a laminator for my Christmas present, which I was excited for. So, 
that's about all that I use. <laughs> awesome. Well, how about for someone like me? I don't have a big tax refund. Do you have any suggestions of how I can start getting ahead if I can't do everything at once? That is a good question. So for those who are you don't get a big refund, if you want to get a month ahead, you can do it with one bill at a time and whatever extra money you have that doesn't have a designated place for your already bills and expenses, put that to the side and just keep saving all that money and eventually you're starting to have enough money to pay that first bill and then do your second bill. Or you could do all of your bills and get a grand total of bills and expenses and just save up that total amount and then that way you have it all in one spot and can do it that way. So there's two options on how you can try to get a month ahead or if you have a bonus from work you can throw towards it. Anything like that could really help. Any extra income, all those things add to it. Okay, so I've heard you talk about your different funds and one of the funds you talk about is a miscellaneous fund mm -hmm. and then you also are talking about unbudgeted. Are those the same thing and if not, how are they different? No, they are different. So miscellaneous will cover anything that's not in our budget because we budget money in miscellaneous for things that we might have forgotten. So if I wanted to go buy pots and pans, I would pull it out of a miscellaneous category because it doesn't fall in our grocery category. And unbudgeted, we pull out anything that our bills are over. We pull that money out of there and it comes from our savings. So if we run out of miscellaneous, it just goes into unbudgeted and that comes out of our savings. Um, I noticed that when you were doing your videos to begin with, um, the first few, you had personal spending for you and your husband, but in these later ones you haven't. Are you gonna be putting that back and why did you get rid of it? So for our personal spending, I did take it out of our budget because it was around Christmas time and we wanted to be able to make sure we could get what we needed left for Christmas. So we took out any extra money that we really did not need because we're used to not having personal money because we've always been on a really tight budget. So just taking that out just gave us an extra $25 a week or so. And we will be putting it back in in February. We've been saving up for it this month to start in February. So I'm hoping to be able to keep it in. We are still working on a lot of things right now with my husband's car and getting him a new car and then putting money into a sinking fund so that way we can kind of know where our money's going a little bit better. You was talking earlier that you have three and diapers and one's coming out. What are you going to do with that extra money and have you thought about putting it into your grocery budget to making your grocery budget bigger? on the months where you have five weeks. So on our grocery budget, we follow Jordan Page and her method is $100 per person per household. So we have a six member household, so that is $600. And I don't plan to kind of go up on our grocery budget because $600 is plenty. That is way more because we have little ones who don't eat much and $600 is just, it's perfect. Even with having our toiletries and household coming out of it as well as our food, it's perfect. I mean, I normally don't go over, so I have plenty of money in there. But with the leftovers, I'm going to try to cut back on the diapers. It's probably just going to go into a sinking fund or debt snowball or any of those categories like that in savings is where I'm going to put that extra money from the diapers that we won't be spending anymore. Okay, now that we're back into tax season again and it's time to do our tax preparation, um, how will you be paying for your tax preparation? So I haven't budgeted anything for tax preparation because I work for a tax service that gives an employee discount. So we get a very good discount on our taxes. So I don't really have to come out too bad of my pocket or out of savings to pay for it. And I will probably have it coming out of my refund. So. So are you going to be putting any of your refund into any of your sinking funds this year? I do have plans on splitting my refund in half and half of it is going to go towards debt and the other half will go into sinking funds and get those categories kind of more fluffed up with some money into them. I will be showing in future videos because it's half going to go into debt and paying off a bunch of debt and then the other half is just going to be in savings. So I mean, I'm going to win-win because I'm getting rid of debt and I'm building my savings. So it's a win-win. 
Um, that's all the questions that we have for you today, Melanie. We really appreciate your time um, and showing us how you've gotten this far. We hope you really enjoy and keep making your videos. Thank you, and I want to make sure all y'all subscribe to my channel. I will be doing a thousand subscriber giveaway, so make sure you are subscribed to my channel, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye!